During the Cretaceous, there were some truly huge meat eaters. On the land, giant theropods were unmatched. And the water wasn't much better, since it was full of giant mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. In these waters, animals had to be at the top of their game to survive, which led to some pretty amazing evolutionary changes. For example, the Archillon, which looks a lot like the modern leatherback sea turtle, was the undisputed king of turtles. The Archillon was the biggest turtle that has ever lived, which is how it got its name, which means ruler turtle in Greek. It was also the biggest turtle of its kind to ever swim. The first one found was an impressive 11.5 feet, or 3.5 meters, long from head to tail. Over the years, Archillons even bigger than that have been found, with the Brigida being the biggest, who weighed between 2.2 and 3.2 tons and was between 4.6 and 15 feet long, making it twice as long as a typical leatherback sea turtle. And the Archillon was very wide, with a distance between flipper and flipper of 4 meters, or 13 feet. The Archillon's big size was partly due to its big shell, which is called a carapace. Unlike most turtles, the Archillon's carapace was not hard. Instead, it was made of ribs that were covered in leathery skin. Even though it wasn't as hard as most turtle shells, it still offered some protection, as the skin would have been thick and durable. Having a completely solid shell would make it too big, which is probably why it doesn't have a hard shell. It would have made the Archillon sink like a rock, so it had very dense rib bones and a light covering to cower both sinking and being too buoyant, giving it more control while swimming. The shell would have had a row of ridges running down the middle of its back. The Archillon's wide carapace also helped protect it from some of the bigger predators, like Mosasaurs because its size would have made it hard for carnivores to wrap their jaws around its body. Even so, it would have probably still been vulnerable to attacks, especially if they were aimed at his delicate flippers. Even though the Archillon's flippers were fragile and long, they were probably easier and smaller prey for mosasaurs and other large marine predators to catch. Even though they were long, it is thought that they weren't the best swimmers. Studies of their flippers showed that they didn't have strong propulsion, so many people think that they only lived in comma, shallower waters. Even more proof is that no bones have been found in places where there were deep waters. With this in mind, there has been some evidence that goes against this theory. For example, the size of its flippers compared to the size of its shell suggests that it probably had short bursts of speed that let it catch moving prey and may have given it enough speed to move in the open ocean if it needed to. When catching its common prey, the Archillon would have used its only weapon, its huge mouth and beak. Some Archillon heads were as long as 3.3 feet 1 meter, so it made sense. They had very long beaks that were also very hooked. Their beaks were probably covered by a sheath and were sharp at the front, because of its hook shape and the doling back areas. There are two main ideas about its beak and what it eats. Most paleontologists think that its beaver bite was perfect for shearing, which is suggested by its hooked structure and its shearing bite. It would have used its sharp teeth to cut up soft-bodied prey into smaller pieces that it could easily swallow. This method is similar to what leatherback sea turtles do today. It is thought that with this bite, it would have mostly hunted soft jellyfish and cephalopods like squid. Sometimes, it would have gone after harder shelled prey and maybe even larger fish or other marine reptiles. Cephalopods and jellyfish from the Cretaceous are thought to have liked water close to the surface. This means that Archillon probably lived near the surface and only rarely hung out near the seafloor. The other theory, based on its beak and bite, showed that it lived mostly on the seafloor. Some paleontologists think that a dinosaur was bad at crushing than sharing, and that its large head and jaw gave it quite a punch. Its main food source would have been hard-shelled crustaceans, which would have tended to stick to the seafloor. There is some evidence that it may have actually collided with the seafloor often, as it had a thick coating like the underside of a turtle. This thickness shows that it has been in the water for a long time and has been in contact with a muddy seafloor. But it could have grown a thick underside to protect itself from ambush attacks, since it lived in the same area as sharks. 
Along with these two ideas, it is also thought that his beak would have been used to fight other Archelans. Some paleontologists even think that the pointy end of its beak was only used for fighting other Archelans and maybe for self-defense against predators. It had many predators because it lived in the late Cretaceous seas. So far, the Archelan has only been found in the United States, with the vast majority of discoveries coming from the Pure Shale Formation in South Dakota. This area is the same as the ancient Western Interior Seaway, which was a large inland sea that ran through ancient North America and split it into two continents. This sea had very shallow waters in the process of Lara Media to the west and Appalachia to the east. The average seafloor was no more than 180 meters 600 feet below the surface. Most likely, the Archilin liked the shallowest parts of the sea because it gave him easier access to prey and coastlines where it is thought to have gone to lay its eggs. But it and its young would have had to watch out for all and based predators. Smaller aquatic carnivores like the seabird, Hesperornis could also attack the young and the waters weren't completely safe for full-grown Archilans either, as was already said. There were a lot of big marine predators in the seas of the late Cretaceous, especially when Archilan was at its peak, about 70 million years ago, and in the area where Archilan was found. People have said that mosasaurs were very common, and the most common one was the Platycarpus, which could grow to be 4.3 meters 14 feet long. But there were also bigger mosasaurs like Tylosaurus, which could grow much bigger than both Platycarpus and Archilin. Unfortunately, mosasaurs weren't the only danger. There were also sharks, like the crow shark, which was longer than most archins. It is thought that sharks were one of the main predators of archins during this time. Plesiosaurs like Elasmosaurus and large predatory fish probably didn't pose as much of a threat. Even though the western interior was dangerous, these waters were full of the prey of the Archilin, such as cephalopods, jellyfish, and squid. Even though it was the biggest turtle ever, the seaway Archilin was still able to live and thrive for millions of years. However, like all things, its time came to an end, but no one knows when or how. Some people think that parts of the geological formation eroded, making it look like the Archilin went extinct much earlier than it did. However, more research is needed to come to a conclusion. As for why the Archilin went extinct, some people think that as the western interior shrank, the Archilin's habitat got smaller and its food supply got smaller. Other people think that increased predation on hatchlings played a role in its final demise. Today, there are around 300 species of turtles ranging in size from the tiny speckled podloper to the massive leatherback sea turtle. Archilin is a crucial link in the evolutionary chain of these fascinating creatures. While Archilin may be long gone, its legacy lives on, inspiring us to continue exploring the wonders of our planet's past. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.